So, you want to become a paramedic. My name is Ayaz and I'm a paramedic. I've been practicing for five years now. What I'm about to show you in this video will not only help you achieve your dreams of becoming a paramedic too, but will also give you a real life insight into what it's really like. First of all, I'd like to thank you for visiting my channel. In this channel, I aim to answer some of your burning questions about how to become a paramedic, but also to give you an insight into some of my passions, one of them being anatomy and physiology, which is something that we use and, and practice on a daily basis. You may already recognize me from a TV program called 999 on the front line. If you haven't already watched it, I recommend you do. It comes on on a channel called More4 in the UK, and it will give you a real life insight into what it's really like as a paramedic and what we get up to. If you find any value in the content that I'm about to show you, then make sure you press the like button and also subscribe and press the notifications button for every new video that I upload. I aim to upload a new video every single week and this is one of a series of videos that will explain everything you need to know about becoming a paramedic. I'm also on Instagram. There's the app right there. Make sure you follow. Now let's get straight into it. So currently in the UK, there are two ways of becoming a paramedic. One is through university and the other one is through an ambulance service. Now it's important to mention that both these routes give you a BSc in Paramedic Science and make you eligible to register with the HCPC. Now let's have a look at both these routes and some of the advantages and disadvantages to these routes. So firstly, let's have a look at the uni route. Now, going through the uni route and going through the uh, ambulance service route, there is no difference in the sense of what you end up achieving. So they both last around about three years and both give you the credits of a BSc in Paramedic Science by the end point. It's also important for me to mention that there is going to be some slight bias coming from me because I went through an ambulance service, not through a uni, so of course I'm going to know a little bit more uh, coming through an ambulance service. So some of the advantages of going through the uni route include the fact that it's predominantly classroom based. So because of that, I generally find that the university students have a better theoretical and academic understanding of the content, so therefore are ac academically more knowledgeable when they qualify. I also find that because University Route it's a higher education institution, the educators that are there are of a higher standard to what you would get from an ambulance service and therefore students from a, from a uni are generally better prepared for their exams and assessments. A lot of the unis at the moment have very, very good standards. Um, there's a lot of unis that I can think of at the top of my head that actually have simulation rooms or simulation houses where students practice their skills that they've learned in the classroom, in a simulation house, uh, and go through scenarios that they might encounter out on the road. Of course, it's not exactly the same as being out on the road because there's a lot of factors at play when you're out and about in the field. However, it's proven very useful for a lot of students who, who have practiced in these simulation scenarios and actually able to transmit that practice and that learning into the actual fields when they come out on placements for the ambulance service. Of course, going to uni, it brings its own advantages, a lot of them being the fact that uni life, a lot of people can safely say that it, it was the best time of their lives. Now, I've been lucky enough to go to university three times. I don't know if you count that as lucky. However, I've managed to learn a lot of different skills and I've also made many, many different fr friends that I've kept for life. And some of them skills are actually transferable in understanding your patients and lifestyles and social issues. So. Sometimes, as they say, you do have to live a little to understand and going to uni definitely throws you into a bit of a deep end to fend for yourself. Another advantage of being a uni student is when you come out on the road on placement, there's always going to be a mentor there. All uni students are assigned a mentor and that mentor usually works with a, another paramedic or a student paramedic or a technician who are all ambulance service based. And with that, you don't drive, you, you don't generally attend jobs until the latter parts of your assessments and uh, placements however just having that fly on the wall type viewpoint where you can watch and learn from from a skilled professional such as your mentor or, or the crewmate can really help you get a good advantage in the sense that you've been able to carry out an, a job or witness a job being carried out without any of the onus being on you, with zero responsibility. All you're, all you're there to do is learn, and that's quite a good advantage to have. So some of the disadvantages then. 
So uni fees are in excess of £9,000 per year. A lot of things boil down to money and it can off-put a lot of people knowing that they have to accumulate around about £28,000 of debt by the time they qualify. And that's not including other living expenses such as um, university accommodation, food, paying for stationery and other bits and bobs add up and, and can put people financially in a, in a bad position by the end of it. However, with student loans, you do end up paying it back um, at an agreed rate with the student finance or student loans companies, but that's something not for me to cover. Another disadvantage I find is I did mention this as an advantage, but of course everything is has a flip side and the flip side to having a mentor there and not having any responsibility is the fact that when a lot of uni students do qualify, there is a lack of confidence in them. And I think that is partially due to the fact that they didn't have that responsibility while they were students on placement and were, weren't able to carry that weight on their shoulders when it comes to making some decisions. So that's something to be aware of as well. Another thing that can be seen as a disadvantage is that the fact that there's no guaranteed job at the end of it. So going through an ambulance service, there's a guaranteed job as you're part of the student paramedic process and that guarantees you a, a job as a paramedic when you qualify. However, going through the uni route, there isn't that. So you will have to apply and look for a job elsewhere or your local service when that time comes about. The only issue with that is, is that sometimes some ambulance services are quite saturated and might not have jobs available, but that's something for you to deal with when it comes to it. And now for the biggest disadvantage of them all going through a uni route for me is the fact that there's no blue light experience. Now, ambulance is a big wide vehicles and can become very dangerous with, with blue lights blaring, having to get to this emergency. Um, and in times like that, a lot of experience is vital. Now, uni students, when they're out on placement, unfortunately are not allowed to drive ambulances. The main reason for that is because they haven't had their blue light training and nor do majority of them possess a valid driving license to, to drive a, a vehicle up to seven and a half ton. Once you do qualify, however, you will have to do a blue light driving course with the ambulance service trust that you're applying to. They generally use you around about four weeks, depending on the service and what training they offer. So let's take a look at some of the advantages and disadvantages of going through an ambulance service route. So amongst the advantages, predominantly you'll find that going through the ambulance service route is more of a hands-on experience, so it's more of a practical way of becoming a paramedic. How it works is when, once you're accepted onto the student paramedic programme, you get enrolled onto the student paramedic um, ambulance school, to say, or tech school, we call it, within the service, um, and you go there to become a student technician. So they use that time, approximately 12 weeks of schooling, to get your knowledge up to scratch before you go out onto the road and, and work as a, as a student technician or a trainee technician. Um, but this is all still part of the student paramedic programme. And so, first of all, you spend around about six months solidifying or consolidating the skills that you learn at tech school. And you work as a double man crew a lot of the times and this allows you to have that opportunity for exposure and to deal with jobs that you would do on a daily basis within the ambulance service and having that experience on learning how to handle these things using your own two feet and your own intellect. Of course you have the guidance of the paramedic that you're going to be working with but it does give you a much stronger advantage once you've managed to hone them skills and put them into practice whilst going through the technician route. Another advantage, and this is one of them double-sided coins type situation, where because you're in, in effect employed by the ambulance service, you sign up to all the shift work that you would do within the ambulance service on the front line. Uh, and this time that you have on your student paramedic program all the way up until you go to university and eventually qualify, the 12 to 18 months that you do spend on the road allows you to become acclimatized to shift work. And then having that acclimatization to shift work, being able to wake up for days, being able to switch your body clock going over to nights, working 12 hour shifts, having to deal with five plus cases a day, um, this helps build confidence and it gives you a little bit of know-how within the ambulance service and understanding the protocols and the policies and procedures uh, as to how we would do with the job uh, given the ambulance service that you're actually employed by. 
It also allows you to build some key skills working within the, the, the field itself, out with the public. Um, some key skills, um, I won't list them all, but some of them being like just, just communication skills, being able to deal with different people from different backgrounds uh, who have very different reasons for calling. And so that allows you to become established. And of course, with the ambulance service, you do have a guaranteed job at the end of it. Unlike with university, as I mentioned earlier, that there is no guaranteed job and it's something you'd have to apply to. There's also a financial advantage going through the ambulance service route, and that is because you won't be applying for a student loan and therefore not accumulating debt over three years. In fact, the ambulance service route is an earn while you learn type contract, and that is basically almost like an apprenticeship, you could call it. And whilst you're a student paramedic, a trainee technician, um, and then even whilst you're at university, you're still getting paid by the ambulance service. And, and the advantage to that is, is that there's a less financial burden whilst you're on the programme. And when you finish, there's not going to be that debt that you're going to have to pay back. Of course, from your salary, the ambulance service do take a small amount. Um, and that is usually to cover for costs of going to university and being able, being a student within the ambulance service at the same time. There is some fees attached to that, but that gets taken out of your wage before tax as well. And lastly, in terms of advantages, and as I say, this this list isn't exhaustive, so I'm sure there's plenty more that people could come up with. Uh, but for me, as I said, the biggest disadvantage for going through the university route was not having the blue light experience. So that would make the biggest advantage going through the ambulance service route, in my eyes, is the blue, blue light driving experience. So when you come out onto the road, in order to be able to work shifts uh, and be a, a trainee technician, student paramedic, going through the ambulance service route, you do have to have had your C1 driving license. Um, you, you will have had to have passed a blue light driving course as well. Um, usually they last around, around about four weeks and it's provided by the ambulance service that you apply to. Um, and yeah, you spend the next 12 to 18 months or so out on the road. Um, you'll be driving on blue lights, you'll be attending uh, two jobs on blue lights and you'll be alerting patients into hospital on blue lights as well. Um, so plenty of time to gather that experience and be able to become a competent emergency driver over the time that you spend as an ambulance service student paramedic. So let's take a look at some disadvantage that I find um, uh, amongst ambulance service students. And so going through an ambulance service in comparison to a university, the educators aren't going to be of the same standard as that of a university and that's because it's a higher education learning institute so its sole purpose is to provide education and therefore the educators are always going to be of a higher standard and so because of that what you find is the training facilities and the education that the students gain uh, prior to going out onto the road is nowhere near what you would find with university students that come out on placement who always seem to be very clued up with the science behind the workings of our job. Another disadvantage that I found for myself was the fact that you only do some studying usually in the time that you spend at tech school before you become a training technician to come out and, and, and practice as a overall title a student paramedic. Um, but that time between then and going to university is approximately 12 to 18 months. So when you do go to university, taking aside the COVID restrictions and things like that, you will spend time in the classroom. And so it changes a lot in terms of you're used to doing these 12 hour shifts, waking up very early in the morning or very late at night, um, very late in the evening. And so this disrupts your pattern. and. It completely takes you out of the mind frame of education and that's what i found for myself the 12 to 18 months i spent on the road without having to keep on top of education or to learn new things um academically it did take its toll and it did take me time to re-acclimatize to the classroom environment so i find that as a little bit of, di of a disadvantage because of the mind frame change around that you need to get acclimatized to Another disadvantage is working through the ambulance service because you're not going Monday to Friday to university, working normal office, uh, studying at normal office hours. Um, in the ambulance service, once you're in the service and you work in frontline, whether you're a trainee technician, a student paramedic, a technician or a paramedic, you're always going to be working shift work. And with that comes the, the, the loss of social life. It's true. You don't get to spend much time with people. The days that you do have off, you spend most of that time recuperating from the, the shifts that you've already been on. 
Um, a lot of things aren't open at the times that we're off. Um, uh, when we finish shift, for example, if we finish at midnight, it's going to be difficult to get hold of anybody or be, to be able to see anyone after midnight. Um, even after eight o'clock for some people, it's very difficult to be able to have a bit of a social life. So that's a big part of going, th a big disadvantage of going through the ambulance service route is for them, that time that you're studying, it's like you're working as a paramedic and with that is the loss of social life. Another disadvantage is what I find is that ambulance service staff, because they're in an environment that isn't really educational based um, and you're learning more hands on through experience, through actually going out on, in, onto the field, um, working with paramedics and other experienced staff watching how they go about things. They'll give, they'll educate you a little bit with their knowledge, but, but it's not the same as doing it through a classroom. And so what you find is that the students that come from university, they're usually of a higher academic ability, uh, capability, and the ones that are through ambulance service uh, usually have a less academic ability. Um, and therefore, within the ambulance service route, you don't need to have three A-levels uh, at a BBC or an ABC or whatever the university requires, um, the, the threshold in terms of academia is lower going through the ambulance service. So in result of that, usually the staff that come through are of a lower academic standard. And so when it comes to actually going into the classrooms and learning all these scientific concepts that you haven't heard of since GCSEs, and let's be honest, who really paid attention in school to their GCSEs? I don't think many people did. And so it's very difficult to close that gap from barely remembering what happened in GCSEs up to higher level five, level six science. It's quite a bit of a jump and a lot of student paramedics through the ambulance service struggle to, to create that gap or to fully understand key concepts that are important to our job role. Now I understand that some of the things that I've spoken about today they might be a little bit confusing and that's fine and that's understandable but in this channel I aim to cover all of them things uh, and to cover absolutely everything uh, regarding becoming a student paramedic uh, or becoming a paramedic and going through the uni route it's important to know that you're a student paramedic until you become a paramedic going through the ambulance service route you're also a student paramedic until you become a paramedic however Within that student paramedic role, which is your overall job title, you do hold other titles um, and I'll talk about that more in the next video. Before I digress any further, let's take a look at how do we apply to either one of these routes. So for university, it's fairly standardised and straightforward, you're doing it through UCAS. You need to attain a certain number of UCAS points depending on the university that you're wanting to go to and then you, if you do meet their criteria, they'll invite you for an interview and then the ball's rolling. For an ambulance service, it's a little bit different. The way to do it for an ambulance service is to set up an alert on the NHS jobs website where you register your interest for the student paramedic role within a certain radius that you're willing to travel to. And if you are going through the student paramedic role through the NHS jobs website, it's probably good practice to have a personal statement already uploaded because if there's a deadline, you might not have enough time to get everything together. Okay guys, so as I said, this is the very first of a series of videos that will help you get all the answers that you need to becoming a paramedic within the UK. The next video I'm going to be uploading will be about what's required as an individual for the paramedic course and what key skills are required to excel in this profession. Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ayaz. I'll see you on the next one.